Hi friends, uh, now we are in the series of the automotive transmissions. So far in this series, we have covered about 9 videos discussing about the basics of the automotive transmissions that is right from the simple machines which are involved in increasing the torque and the torque versus speed. Then the various types of the mechanical gearboxes that is constant mesh and synchromesh gearboxes clutch that is mechanical clutch and also the fluid coupling and the torque converters. Then we move to the automatic transmissions in that we discussed in detail about the torque converter. Then about the basics of the automatic transmission, how an automatic transmission works, in what way it is superior to the manually operated gearboxes. We have also discussed in detail about the planetary gear system involved in the automatic transmissions and the pistons and clutches. Now in this video, I am going to talk about the hydraulics involved in the automatic transmissions. How the hydraulics are working in the automatic transmissions for the smooth shifting of the gears as per the dynamic road conditions and which are all the important components involved in the hydraulics of the transmissions. See this figure which represents the vehicle fitted to the mechanical gearbox. You can see the three pedals here. This A for the acceleration, B for the brake and C for the clutch. While the left leg is exclusively used for the clutch operation, that is for the momentary disengagement of the drive from the engine to the transmission during the clutch, during the gear shifting. This other two pedals like that is acceleration and brake are operated with only one leg, that is the right leg. You see the gear shifting lever here. <clears throat> this is the gear lever for the five speed, five forward speed transmission and one reverse speed. So during every gear change, you have to move this lever to the desired direction. But two by pressing the clutch. Then see this operator, a driver. At any point of the time, during gear changing, he has to concentrate on the road and steering, holding the steering wheel in one hand, holding the gear lever in the other hand and operating the two legs for pressing the clutch and as well as the acceleration or the brake. If during the change of the gear, he has to decelerate the vehicle, then again has to accelerate as soon as the next gear is engaged. Means the four simultaneous operations has to be done by the operator using his two hands and two legs and with very good synchronization for the smooth shifting of the gears. The biggest challenge for the operator is the concentration and focus on the driving. And also in addition to the challenges, he has to continuously undergo a kind of stress for doing these operations simultaneously. So the operating a vehicle with a mechanical gearbox is really tougher nowadays that too considering the ever increasing traffic. Then come to the gear shifting mechanism with automatic transmission. You can see there are only two pedals that is the accelerator pedal and as well as the brake pedal. There is no any clutch pedal that is fitted here because the automatic transmission doesn't have the mechanical clutch because most of the transmissions are operated with the torque converter. Okay, except the dual clutch transmission in which the clutches also are operated with a kind of electronic mechanism, mechanism or electronics. So two pedals for two legs, then comes to the gear shifting lever. Whenever we want to drive in the forward direction, just putting this lever in the drive mode is enough. Drive mode is meant to drive the vehicle in the forward direction in all the gears. Then P is for the parking the vehicle, then R is the reverse direction. N is for the neutral. S and L have separate functions which will be explained in future coming videos. So just in brief, simply keeping this lever in D mode is enough without pressing any clutch. The gears will change automatically depending on the dynamic road conditions or the driving conditions. The driver can comfortably hold the steering wheel in two hands and focus on the driving on the road very clearly. So compared to the stress faced by the operator or the driver is very, very less compared to the driving of the vehicle fitted with the mechanical transmission. Just let us observe this transmission. This is the automatic trans. This is the automatic transmission. The basic thing in any transmission, automatic transmission or the mechanical transmission, ultimately the power is transferred 
to the mechanical components only. In case of mechanical transmission, the power is transferred from drive gear to the driven gear. Here, in case of this automatic transmission, there is a set of planetary gears for each and every gear. So, as clearly discussed in the planetary gear functioning, one set of gears will be acting as an input, the other will be a stationary member and the third one will be an output member. So, like the drive is transmitted or the power is transmitted. But what is making to engage the desired planetary gear here is the clutch plates. Engagement of the clutch plates makes to hold one of the three components of the planetary system. The form of the principle of planetary gear is give input to one unit, hold the second unit and automatically third unit will be the output. So one among the three components that is sun, planetary or ring will be held by engaging these clutches. Then the drive will come through the third unit. How these clutches holds this required or desired component in the planetary gear is through the actuation through the hydraulic fluid. There is a piston which we already clearly discussed in the previous video. Oil is applied here at the piston. The piston, piston pushes and holds the clutch plates together. A kind of braking force is applied here. So what arrangement is the transmission is having to apply this or to move these clutch plates or to hold these clutch plates together is nothing but the hydraulics in the automatic transmission. Give these five vital components of this transmission. The first one is the torque converter, so which transmits the power from the engine to the transmission input shaft through the hydraulic fluid media. Then the zero torque pump or the charging pump. The function of this one is take the oil from the sump, supply to the various components of the transmission simultaneously to the torque converter and the clutch plates we already discussed to hold the desired component of the planetary wheel rigidly together. This is the planetary wheels which we already discussed and the area where we are focusing in this video is the valve body. This valve body is fitted to the transmission housing either in the bottom or in the top or in the sides. The function of the valve body is to act as a brain to the transmission because it takes the signal from the engine continuously monitoring the load of the engine and also take the signal from the wheels okay monitoring what load is there on the wheels the load is less or more and also accordingly changes the gears. For example the vehicle has to move from rest to position to the rest position, the first gear is applied initially, then as the vehicle attains the speed or pick up the speed, the first gear has to be disconnected and second gear has to be engaged. Same second to third, third to fourth, so on. When the vehicle faces the load during the climbing of a gradient or going in a rough terrain or the vehicle is parked or where the vehicle is stopped in front of the signal, again it has to start, that time the gears will start downshifting from higher range to the lower range. So this is the job precisely a control valve will does, control valve will do in the transmission. This control valve is having so many other valves which we will discuss now. The control valve diagram will look like this. Overall the control valve looks like this. This is a kind of aluminum alloy or aluminum casting. These grooves are oil passages. These are solenoid valves. The modern control valves will operate purely on the electronic signals through the solenoids. The older version control valves operates through this hydraulic movements and mechanical movements. You can see this block vertical components. These are all spools or the valves. This is a valve, this is a valve, this is a valve here, this is a valve here. The movement of these valves the movement of these pools inside the bores 
allows the oil passes from one end to the other end okay passing to the desired components observe this circuit this circuit is having the oil some then oil pump then the main pressure regulator valve and the torque converter control valve then from main pressure regulator valve oil is supplied to the various components of the transmission and also the torque converter the main job of the main pressure regulator valve is to regulate or control the pressure at the predefined level whatever the excess pressure is there the oil will be sent back to the sump the purpose of this torque converter valve is to supply the torque converter oil at a desired level generally the torque converter inlet oil pressure will be less than the main pressure regulator valve and there will be so many valves which we will discuss now the transmission looks like this uh, these are the planetary gears these are the clutches connected to the planetary gear drums and housings and uh, this is the control valve this is the bottom one is fitted to this there is a gasket in between uh, the housing and the control valve to prevent the leakage of the oil this is the torque converter control valve looks like this now let us have a look which are all the components control valve is having these are some valves fitted in the control valve just let us go through one by one i will assume some of the valves but cannot say precisely from this figure which all belongs to which job for example this is the let us see this is the main pressure regulator valve this is actually located in the delivery line of the charging pump the job of the function of this valve is to regulate the fluid pressure at defined level and allowing fluid back to return line when the pressure exceeds okay then there will be another valve among this valve which is called the torque converter pressure regulator valve this is located after the main pressure relief valve but before the torque converter input the function of this valve is to maintain the fluid pressure at a defined level for efficient functioning of the torque converter then there are shift signal valves depending upon the model of the transmission the number of valves will vary there will be three valves four valves depending on the number of speeds in the transmission and the function of this valve is to divert the oil which is coming from the main pressure regulator valve and some of the valves to divert the oil to the desired clutch packs then there will be trimmer valves is the job of the trimmer valve is for smooth transition of the gear shifting from one ratio to the other ratio normally when we shift the gears in the mechanical transmission a kind of jerking we will feel as it is shifting from lower to higher gear or shifting from lower higher to lower grade so to avoid that kind of jerking the trimmer valves are provided this is to prevent the many mechanical components from the jerks shock or premature wear and tear then there is an accumulator valve is there so the function of the accumulator valve accumulator is nothing but a kind of pulsation damper uh, by giving a kind of cushioning arrangements to the complete hydraulic system involved in the gear changing then there is another all called is the governor in the older version of the transmissions and in uh, many higher capacity automatic transmissions we can see the centrifugal governors the latest transmissions do have the solenoid in case of the centrifugal governor this is the centrifugal governor having flyweights and a spool okay and this is connected to the output shaft of the transmission how it functions when the transmission shaft speed is low or the revolutions the rpm is low the flyweights are in closed position that is they are closer to each other keeping the spool outwards blocking the oil passes here as the speed is increased the flyweight starts moving outwards pushing this spool inside so this is going swinging outside and this is coming here inside going and go traveling towards this direction allowing this passes to open 
to the chamber. See this, the, way, the, 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 the governor fibers are moved outwards. This pool is moved here and the passage is opened. This chamber is filled and the pressurized oil is going from this to the desired walls. Again, so when the vehicle speed drops down, the fly weights come closer and the spool is pushed back either to partially close this passage or completely close this package. This is how the centrifugal governor works. The main job of centrifugal governor is in relation to the load on the wheels of the vehicle or the output shaft, this sends to the signals to either upshift or downshift the gears. This sends to the signals to the shift signal walls to upshift or downshift the gears. So how this governor functions, you can see this animation. The speed is increased, flyweights are moving out, it's coming down, okay. This lever is linked here, this flap is moving. The governor looks like this, this is a gear connected to the transmission output shaft and this is the wall body, governor wall body, these are the flyweights, this one and inside there will be spool, this spool. These slots are for the oil passes. And this is the job of this main manual selected valve is to keep the oil flow in the desired position. If you want in the parking, this allows for parking, stopping the gear engagement. Same way, if you want in reverse, the oil will put the reverse clutches want forward is goes to forward direction and the rest of the job that automatic shifting of the lower gear to the higher gear will be taken by taken care by the transmission control valve. The transmission control valve acts like a brain for the transmission. Why? Because it has to listen to the engine continuously monitor the engine load and also it has to see the load on the tires on the wheels of the vehicle, balance the load from the driving conditions and as well as the engine and decides to keep the transmission in the appropriate gear. So this is how a control wall functions. I will explain once again about how the gear changing takes place. A simple uh, function of the hydraulic fluid uh, for engaging the clutches. So the what happens, the moment engine is started, the turbine rotates and as the charging pump is fitted to the same shaft of the turbine shaft, charging pump rotates and the charging pump draws the oil from the sump and supplies to the main pressure regulator wall. Then a portion of oil goes to the transmission lines, various lines and a portion of oil goes to the torque converter. This is the converter reef line. From converter, oil goes to the car conductor inside. What is the return oil comes? This comes through this line and goes to the sump. So like this, car converter starts functioning like a fluid coupling. Then the drive is transferred, the power is transferred from uh, the engine to the transmission input. And this oil from the regulator wall is available at so many walls in the system. That is ship signal valves accumulator walls, trimmer walls, and so many walls, governor wall wonder. So depending upon the driving conditions, the respective walls are actuated by taking the controls from the control valve and the desired clutch is engaged and the desired gear is engaged. That's how the hydraulic system functions in the automatic transmission. This is what we discussed about purely about the hydromechanical. Now the present generation automatic transmissions are fitted with electronics which we will be discussing in the next video. Please go through these three pages notes. Hope it will be useful to you. In case you have any queries, you can contact me through the email.